In quantum atom theory, time has geometry and asymmetry that can explain the probability and non-locality of quantum physics. If we look at the way we measure time using an atomic clock, it is by measuring electromagnetic radiation in the form of microwaves. Even a traditional pendulum clock will mimic the motion of electromagnetic radiation, keeping perfect time. Because it is impossible to achieve absolute zero, all atoms radiate electromagnetic radiation continuously. Electromagnetic radiation expands in three-dimensional space as light spheres. When each wavefront comes in contact with the electrons on the surface of an another atom, it will form a photon-electron coupling, creating a new moment in time and a new expanding light sphere of future probability. This will create Einstein's curvature of space-time and form part of the dynamically evolving geometry of time. Put very simply, the emission and absorption of electromagnetic radiation creates a forward momentum of time at the most fundamental level. This is very difficult to visualize, but in this oil painting of a geisha girl walking through sunlight, using the terminology of quantum mechanics, the wave-particle duality of the light will collapse as she walks through the rays of light. She will collapse the wave function into moments of time and space, creating her own space-time geometry. Any object can collapse the wave function, but it is because the observer can choose when and where to collapse the wave function that we have free will to create our own future. If the observer does not collapse the quantum wave particle function, the quantum particle will only have the momentum of its own wave function. Because light is electromagnetic radiation in the visible spectrum, this process is visible to us. In the two-slit experiment, we can see light radiate out, striking objects, creating new moments of time. When the light reaches the screen with the two slits, the photon will react with the electrons of the screen. This will collapse the wave particle duality of the light, creating new quantum particles in space and new moments in time. The part of the wave that does not come in contact with the screen will expand in all possible routes, going through both slits as two light spheres of quantized wavefronts. Constructive and destructive interference between the waves will cause them to superimpose or cancel each other out. When this wave particle function comes in contact with the screen, it will collapse, creating moments of time and quantum particles in the shape of an interference pattern. When the observer turns on a detector to determine which slit a photon passes through, the interference pattern collapses. At that moment in time, the interference pattern disappears, because to observe the photon we have to create a photon-electron coupling, collapsing each wavefront into a new quantum particle that will have its own position in space and time. If we turn the detector off, we remove the photon-electron coupling, and in time, the interference pattern will reform. Just like in Newton's first law of motion, the interference pattern will continue to maintain its state, unless acted upon by an external force. We have entanglement because the polarization will be set at the creation of each expanding wavefront. The wavefront will expand in the form of a light sphere, and the polarization will remain the same for the entire surface of the light sphere, no matter how large it becomes. Because each atom is creating its own space-time at the same rate that light moves, the expansion of light between the atoms will always be a universal constant, independent of the motion of the source. This can also explain why light is so beautiful when it strikes an object. It is because we are looking at a moment of pure creation of time and space. This theory fits in with Einstein's theories on relativity. Because the individual atoms create their own space-time geometry relative to their position and momentum, therefore there is no universal time. Because of this, momentum is itself frame-dependent, and the observer as a group of atoms is the only true reference frame. Even a child's toy spinning top will form its own space-time geometry relative to its position and momentum.
When the wavefronts of two spheres come in contact, we will have disruptive interference, and the wavefronts out of phase will cancel each other out. There will also be constructive interference between the wavefronts that are in phase, and they will superimpose. The radiating energy will be entirely absorbed proportionally to the masses within the objects. This will cause an unbalanced force, and the two objects will resonate together in a process known as gravity. Because atoms consist mostly of empty space, electromagnetic radiation of short wavelengths, like X-rays, can penetrate the object, and therefore every single part of matter can take part in the gravitational interaction. We have the inverse square law because the surface area of the light sphere increases with the square of the radius. Thus the strength of the gravitational field is inversely proportional to the square of the distance from the source. When the atoms come together under their own gravity, time will synchronize, distorting the geometry of space-time, creating time variations between and within objects. It is time variations within magnetic fields that act as a source for electric fields, and time varying electric fields is a source of the magnetic fields. When one field is changing in time, then a field of the other is induced. This will be relative to the position and momentum of the objects creating the time variations, the atoms themselves. The greater the angle in space, the greater the curvature of space-time, the stronger the electromagnetic field at that point in space, and at that moment in time. Time in the form of the forward momentum of electromagnetic radiation is continuously creating a blank canvas for the observer that she or he can participate in. This is what Socrates called a sea of beauty. The geometry of time is an innate property of matter, whatever form or shape it takes. Each photon-electron coupling will create its own symmetry around its point in space-time. This can be observed e either as a point in space over a period of time, or as an area of space at a moment in time, but not as both. Therefore we have the measurement problem of quantum mechanics. We have a universal dynamically evolving geometry of space-time, forming symmetry from simple dynamics. The forward momentum of electromagnetic radiation will place light-charged particles that repel, becoming equally placed along the curvature of space-time. Only a slight distortion in the space-time symmetry will spiral out, creating the imperfect symmetry of the observer. In this theory, evolution started with a mathematical pattern that forms naturally, then fine-tunes it by natural selection. The same mechanism of symmetry breaking governs the whole universe of organic and non-organic matter, from spiral galaxies to seashells, to the DNA of life itself. Everything will form into ever greater complexity, because everything is creating its own space-time geometry of ever greater diversity. Therefore we see fractional self-similarities appearing at every angle and degree of creation. It is easy to see how our infinite sequence of whole numbers can represent the infinity of three-dimensional space, because the numbers can be used to represent three-dimensional shapes. But in quantum atom theory, it is the irrational number pi that drops out of the whole number sequence that represents the never-ending expansion of time. It is not just because it is random and carries on expanding forever. In quantum physics, it takes three quantum variables to calculate the wave function as it expands as an inverse volume of space, and pi is in the calculations at almost every level. This is not by magic or by chance but because it actually represents the geometry of Einstein's curvature of space-time, and therefore the forward momentum of time. In quantum atom theory, infinity as a, is an actual reality of our universe, not a mathematical paradox. Infinity can always be divided into ever-decreasing or increasing sets of infinities. This is because each atom is creating its own space-time geometry by the forward expansion of time, that can always be divided into sets of infinities. But because there is only a limited number of elements, everything will reform in cycles.